Hi guys, it's Danny. Okay, so today we will discuss about honeydew or happy sap or whatever you want to call it. Practically, this liquid that is very sticky and sugary that most orchids produce. I got the idea of making this video because Maria Young here on YouTube posted yesterday a very bad case of an orchid producing so much sap that it actually rotted and killed some of the buds. Now, this video is no longer on YouTube. I'm not sure why she took it down. I saw it the moment it was posted, but in case this video appears once again on YouTube, I will share it somewhere here because it is really interesting. So Maria, if you post this video again, let me know and I'll add it here so everybody can see. In any case, the moment that I saw the video, for some reason, I got the idea of actually translating the word sap into my own language. I don't usually do this because I tend to think in English, but for some reason I translated it. And the moment I had the word in my own language, it kinda hit me. My fifth grade biology lesson hit me in the face and everything made sense. Alrighty gang, get ready for Plant Circulation 101. Now, in many articles or videos, you might have heard people talking about vital juices of the orchid. What are these vital juices? Well, all plants actually have the sap, which is the vital juice, practically. Running through plants, there are actually two sorts of saps. The first sap is called brood sap, or actually in English it's called crude sap. It is high in minerals because the plant absorbs nutrients and fertilizer from its media or whatever surface it is attached to. Now it travels towards the leaf of any plant because the leaf is a sort of a kitchen for any plant. This is where the food is actually produced. So the raw material travels towards the leaf where the food will be cooked. Now in the leaf there are some processes that happen and transform this crude sap into elaborated sap. Elaborated sap is actually the food of the orchid that travels further on from the leaf to the other organs of the plant. The elaborated sap is actually high in glucids or carbohydrates. This actually means it is high in sugars. And as we all know, sugar means energy. Now, if you've ever touched the sap of the orchids, you will discover that it is actually a very sticky substance. And if you actually taste it, it will taste sugary. So this sap is nothing more than elaborated sap. So practically, the food of the orchid that travels all through the orchid and feeds it. Now at this point, I think you already know where I'm going with this discussion. So now that we know what this honey sap is or this happy sap is, let's try to answer the question of why the orchid actually exudes it from the leaves and sometimes from the flower spikes. Well, you have to know something if you didn't already know. The orchid leaves and practically all the tissue of the orchid is just like a skin. It has pores. Although scientifically they're called something else, for the purpose of this video being easy to understand, I'll just call them pores. Because all the portions of a plant and of any orchid need to breathe. Even the flower spike, even the roots. Everything about an orchid needs to properly breathe and exchange gases. And if you noticed, most of the honeydew is actually formed on the underside of the leaves. This is because in this region, it is the main breathing mechanism of any orchid. But it's not the only organ that breathes. So because the orchid is full of pores, the happy sap, or better said, the elaborated sap, exudes from the orchid, especially when it is produced massively. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but the organs that produce this elaborated sap, or ooze this elaborated sap, are mainly the undersides of new leaves, but also new growths of orchids. And you've seen this quite a lot of time on many orchids. Practically, the sheath produces this sap. But also, flower spikes produce massive amounts of sap, as you can see. Well, produce is pretty much incorrect. They actually transpire this sap. So what could be an explanation for this? Okay, so the things that I have explained so far with the crude sap and elaborated sap, it's pretty much common knowledge if you're a biologist. Whatever I'm gonna tell you from now on is my pure logic, simply because nobody actually bothers to write an article about this. So what I will tell you next is my pure logic. Well, think about it. The orchid produces new growths and flower spikes to propagate itself. Practically, this is the ultimate goal for any plant and any orchid. For this reason, it uses all its energy. But did you ever think what this energy means? Well, practically it gives a lot of food to those organs. So, a lot of elaborated sap. 
So new growths as well as flower spikes will benefit a full attention from the orchid and the orchid will try to allocate a lot of food towards those organs. If you noticed, old leaves and old organs of an orchid do not produce that much happy sap or elaborated sap, but the new growths and flower spikes are the ones who ooze out the vast majority of the sap. There is this rumor on the internet that actually orchids produce the sap on flower spikes to attract ants that will actually keep them safe from some pests. Now, I've never really mentioned this in any of my videos because it really does not make sense to me. And if you think about it, it's pretty logical that an orchid would want to attract ants or other insects to protect it from some other pests. So my explanation is a bit more logical in my mind. At least this is what I think. Now, as I said, the sticky substance can actually be detrimental to some orchids. If it is excessive, it can actually create bacterial infections or fungal infections. Also, it can suffocate buds and actually kill them and rot them. So, you might wonder, well, why does the orchid permit such a thing? Because in nature, there is no one there to remove the sap. Well, you're forgetting something. In nature, the orchids do get showers of rain. If it's not every day, then every few days, they do get showered and washed and practically all that excessive sap gets washed away. Now, in our home, we don't usually shower our orchids every day, nor do we actually shower them because we do not want to rot them. That's a whole different discussion that I will not get into. So if you were wondering if this sap has any other purpose because it is produced so massively, I would actually say that it doesn't and in nature it actually gets washed away and might not affect the orchid like it affects it in our home. Now a lot of people actually refer to the sap as happy sap and actually affirm that it is a sign that your orchid is happy and healthy and everything is okay. Well, I have an example to show you otherwise. Now, since this is a basic function of any plant, this sap will be produced no matter what. If a plant can pick up nutrients and water and it has some live leaf tissue, it will produce the elaborated sap. Now, do you remember this girl? This is a phalaenopsis that my neighbor gave me. As you can see, it is anything but happy. Now, the first day that I hydrated this orchid, it actually produced some of this happy sap. And I have some remains of it on this leaf. Hopefully you can see here some remains of sugary substance. This means that this orchid actually absorbed some moisture through this root that it still has here and tried to produce an elaborated sap. However, as you can see, this orchid is not happy and not healthy. If you think in terms that your orchid is picking up moisture, then yes, it's a good thing. If it wouldn't pick up moisture, it probably wouldn't create this happy sap. But sadly, this happy sap does not mean your orchid is perfectly healthy and perfectly happy with all the conditions you are providing. And if you are wondering if you should leave the sap on or if you should remove it, well, I would say if you can remove it safely, go ahead and remove it. Because if it is produced excessively, it can actually suffocate and kill buds, it can rot buds, it can also start a bacterial infection on the leaf and so on. Get yourself a cotton ball, soak it in some water and the sugary stuff will come right off. I actually do this because somehow that sticky stuff gets into my hair and on my clothes and it's actually not beneficial for the orchid anyway and it just bugs me. So I personally do remove it. So in conclusion, what is happy sap? Well, it's practically orchid food. Why does it ooze out of the orchid? Well, because the orchid has breathing pores all over. Why is it sticky and sweet? Well, because it is high in carbohydrates. Does it mean the orchid is happy and healthy? Not really, sadly. Is it used by the orchid to attract insects? Not really, but I'm pretty sure it will attract some ants, so be careful with that. Should you try to remove it? I would say so, yes. It's not beneficial for the orchid, especially in your home. It can get into your hair and clothes and it's really not of any use to you or your orchid. What does it exactly mean? Well, it means that the orchid is picking up moisture and that's a good thing, but it certainly does not mean your orchid is 100% healthy. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If this made any sense to you, you can also search about plant circulation on Wikipedia and on the internet. There is not a lot of articles on it because this is something you actually learn in school and not many people are interested in it. Practically, biologists will know more about the subject than me or than Wikipedia. But the basic stuff is out there on Google, so just search for it. Alrighty, so if you have some questions for me or suggestions for videos, just leave me a comment below and I'll get back to you. Also, if you want to see more videos from me, more discussions, more orchids, 
subscribe to my channel and you'll stay up to date. And thank you so much for joining. I'll see you next time. Bye!